What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Billy Joe Saunders. Billy Joe Saunders did tweet. He said, at GGG Boxing, stop fighting this opposition at the zone underscore Uf USA. If you want a proper man to face, I'm ready at MTK Global at Frank Warren underscore TV. Make it happen. Hashtag not a big drama show. Hmm. Okay, well, Billy Joe Saunders has been after the limelight for a long time. He had his opportunity against Andrade. That's like the highest on the totem pole, you know, that he was going to get versus an undefeated fighter. I was looking, really looking forward to that fight. And, you know, some nasal, post-nasal drip spray supplement chemical fucked all that up, right? They stripped him and... Andrade ended up fighting a guy for that belt, you know, which is the WBO middleweight championship of the world. Since then, Billy Joe has went to 168. Of course, you know, he's the WBO super middleweight champion now, you know, and he calls out Triple G, of course, because Triple G to me yesterday, I said this in the fight study, he looks beatable. He looks hittable. He's always been hittable, you know, um, I am interested to know what he's going to do or what Jonathan Banks is going to do with him, how these guys will gel because he looked like at the beginning, he looked like he was moving his head until he started to punch. That's not the point. The point is when you punch, you anticipate a punch coming back. That's, that's the significance of a counter. That's the significance of moving your head left to right in order to punch with you punch, then react from the other person's reaction and giving your own. Okay. He really didn't do that very well last night. And again, he is just tough, and that's what got him through those tough punches. Not taking anything from Steve Rose. Maybe he can't crack as hard. I don't know. But he did get hit. Billy Joe Saunders is a guy, Southpaw, that he would be de very difficult to fight. And that's what makes that fight so intriguing. That's why I wanted to see um, Golovkin Lara. Okay, because Lara wanted to fight Golovkin. And Abel Sanchez wasn't interested in that fight. In fact, Billy Joe Saunders sent over a contract and signed that contract and sent it over to Golovkin, and he didn't respond. He was too busy busy fighting Canelo, fighting for money, obviously, at this point. You know, you can't say I'm fighting for legacy. You know, it was Canelo. He wasn't even middleweight at that point. Not officially, right? Maybe physically he was, but not officially. But it's just strange to me how Golovkin didn't sign a fight with uh, Billy Joe, and, and and he's just avoiding all these top fighters. Steve Rolls, you know, guys criticize Golovkin. They should. They should They should criticize Golovkin. Golovkin, you, people say, oh, he came off his first loss. Well, look, if you think he's winning, there should be nothing psychologically wrong with that. He didn't take a beating. He was in a tough fight that a lot of people thought he won. Why would you start now to fight lower opposition like Steve Rose? He should have been fighting Billy Joe Saunders anyway. He should have fought him already. You know, and it would have been totally undisputed. Now, it shouldn't be a belt lingering out there. Andrade should have never had the belt because Billy Joe should have fought Golovkin for it. You know? Anyway, that's my counterpunch on that. Um, this fight, I would love to see this fight. And I think Billy Joe depends on how he looks, you know, because he's fighting soon right? But he looks good. You know, I think he rises for the occasion and that would be a very good fight. I'd see Golovkin trying to track him down and Billy Joe using the ring like he does. You know, he's a big middleweight, you know, now would Golovkin come to 168 for that WBO title? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't even, he's never left 160. He's considered 168 now after the loss of Canelo, but you know, Logic has it. He's not moving anywhere. He's going to ch chase Canelo until it, until he fucking retires or Canelo retires him, whichever the case. And speaking of Canelo, why is it Billy Joe Saunders trying to aim Canelo or, 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 or target Canelo? That's the biggest. That would be a bigger fight than Golovkin. You know what I mean? Because for one, they're both champions at 168. Canelo holds the WBA regular. Callum Smith holds that WBA super, and we have Billy Joe with the WBO, all right? Well, he should really come after Canelo, if anything, 
you know, and for a unification at 168. See, Canelo's doing big shit. He's damn near, he's unified middleweight champion, but he's, you know, but he's a two-time, or he's more than a two-time, but he's another, uh, he's has another belt in another weight class. So he's doing big things. But, you know, that's my thoughts on that. I think that Billy Joe's wasting his breath with Golovkin because I don't think Golovkin would want to fight someone like Billy Joe because Billy Joe is a high risk, you know, low reward. He doesn't want to lose another decision to a guy like that. That's why the guys didn't want to fight Lara. You know, these guys are very skilled, but at the end of the day, they don't really bring too much to the table, honestly. You know, Billy Joe gave David Lemieux one of the best boxing lessons that, I, that I've seen in a very long time, probably since Hopkins and Tarver, okay? So um, I think that... <clears throat> I think that Billy Joe should target Canelo if Canelo would give him a shot, you know. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think about Billy Joe Saunders uh, calling out Golovkin. Will Golovkin accept the challenge? Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been Counterpunch. Peace.